Shalom, shalom to all the listeners who woke up early this morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. You're listening to the Kangu Cup broadcast. Today is Friday and I would like to discuss once again about the end of life on earth and the resurrection of the dead. I hope that many of the listeners already know that there will be a resurrection of the dead. If you're a believer, you know that the dead will be resurrected. When people die, we bury their bodies. But many of you already know that there will be a day when the dead in Christ will be raised. That's the day when Jesus Christ will come back to take his church. When the disciples were watching Jesus ascend to heaven, angels told them that Jesus will come back in the same way that they saw him go into heaven. He will come back to take his church. That's why the church needs to get ready. The word of God says that the church is the bride of Christ. At this point, we still the fiancé of Christ. The word of God compares the church to a fiancé. When a couple is engaged to be married, the fiancé prepares herself for the day when her husband will come to take her away from her home and take her to the place where they will live together. In the same way, the church is like a fiancé waiting for her husband to come and take her away to be with him. As I often tell you in this broadcast, the church needs to get ready through sanctification and the word of God. You should always be ready so that when Jesus comes back, he will find you ready. Imagine if a groom was going to pick up his bride ride on the wedding day and he finds her totally unprepared with dirty clothes and having not showered, I think that he would just go back without taking her. But if he finds her well prepared, he rejoices. They take pictures. Those who came with the groom also rejoice because the bride is looking her best. Jesus also wants his bride to be ready. He wants the church to be ready. Getting ready is to separate yourself from worldly things, is to separate yourself from sin, is to have a life of prayer, is to quit your sinful ways. If you're living in sin, you need to get ready. You need to repent because Jesus is coming back soon to take his church. If you were to die today, it would be all over for you. You will be raised to face judgment. Let me ask you this question. If you were to die today, would you die in Christ or you would be dying in your sins? This is a very important question and I want every listener to think about it. I don't wish any one of you to die in your sins. My desire is that every listener would die in Christ, saved and ready, having repented and ready to be the bride of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 to 17 says that the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It's a true blessing to be part of those who will be resurrected on that day. My greatest desire for all of you who are listening is that you will be ready for the day when Jesus will come back to take his church. No one knows the day or the hour. It can be today or next year, but you need to be ready for the day we come. Let me tell you that those who die in their sins will also be resurrected, but at a different time. You can read about it in Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 to 13. It says that all the dead will be brought before the throne of God and each one will be judged according to his works. I hope that you're hearing this. Each one will be judged according to his works here on earth. Verse 15 says that anyone not find written in the book of life will be thrown in the lake of fire. I don't wish this horrible end on anyone. That's why I keep bringing back these messages. I don't want any listener to be resurrected to face judgment for all the sins you committed here on earth. I don't want your name to be missing in the book of life. Let me tell you that today your name can be written in the book of life. All you need to do is to repent from your sins and call on Jesus so he can come into your life. Tell him that you are accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Call on him so he can set you free. If you are bound by drugs or alcohol or anything else, Jesus is able to set you free. So call on him. If you need assistance, you can call us at plus 256-7813-77337.
It's now time to continue our teaching on Thanksgiving, which started on July 20th. If you're new to the broadcast, you can consult the archives to catch up on what you've covered so far. Yesterday, I spoke about three levels of Thanksgiving. I told you that the first level is to give thanks to God for the things He gave you. Maybe He gave you a job or a wife. He gave you life. He healed your disease. It's good to give thanks for all those things. That's the first level of thanksgiving. The second level is to give thanks to God for who He is, for His attributes. You give thanks for His love, for His mercy, for His patience, for His salvation. We give thanks because He doesn't treat us as we deserve. We give thanks because He is a loving Father full of patience. We need to give thanks for all those attributes of God. Finally, the third level is to speak about His majesty that is displayed through His creation. So you give Him thanks for His creation. My desire is that every listener would reach that third level. Once you're at that level, nothing will ever stop you from giving thanks to God. That's because your thanksgiving will no longer depend on what you received, but it will be based on God's majesty and His love. The sad thing is that many listeners aren't even at the first level. They don't even give thanks for what they received. They keep going before God asking for more things, but they don't give thanks for what they already have. We should all be at least at that first level. Let me ask you this. Do you give thanks for what you have? Some may say, I gave thanks when I got my job. I gave thanks when God gave me a child. Well, you gave thanks when it happened and that was it. You've already forgotten about it. Today you have new expectations. So why you wait for God to give you your new desires? You don't give thanks. You just keep asking for more. I want us to change our attitude. I want the listeners of Kanguka to change their conduct. If you're waiting for an answer from God, don't stop giving thanks. Don't delay your thanksgiving until he gives you more. People who say, I've never received anything, those are liars. You're lying if you say that you don't have anything to thank God for. Everyone listening to me has something to give thanks for. Give thanks that you have a beating heart. You may be listening to me from a hospital bed, but give thanks that you're still alive. Maybe you only eat once a day. Give thanks to God that you're able to eat one meal per day. If you can only eat once every two days, give thanks that you have something to eat every couple days. Giving thanks for a big promotion isn't an indication of a heart that's full of thanksgiving. You can tell that someone has an attitude of thanksgiving when he gives thanks for small things, when he gives thanks for things that others may despise. He gives thanks for them because he knows that there are people who don't even have what he has and he understands that whatever he has was given to him by God. You can't do anything on your own. You can't provide anything to yourself on your own. You may say that you have strength but you were given that strength. You may say that you're intelligent but God gave you that intelligence. You say that you have studied, you have degrees but you received those degrees thanks to the intelligence that God gave gave you. That's why you should give thanks every day. Do you give thanks when you're not receiving things that you consider important? When you experience failure? When things aren't going well? When you receive bad news? When your fiancé dumps you? When your marriage is struggling? When all you see with your eyes is hardships? Do you still give thanks to God? If you stop giving thanks and you start complaining because you're experiencing problems, then you stay at the first level of thanksgiving. It means that unless you receive good things, you don't give thanks and you complain. But when you reach the second level, you still give thanks even if you're experiencing bad things. You may be struggling in your marriage or in your job or in something else. But you still give thanks to God because you know that He is still the living God no matter what you go through. He is still the loving and merciful God. So you keep giving Him thanks for who He is. You can even go one step higher at level 3. That's when you start praising Him for His majesty by giving thanks for His creation. You speak about the things he created, the rivers, the stars, the visible world and the invisible world. Even if there are some hardships in your life, even if you struggle in your marriage or at work, even if you lost a contract, even if you still sick, in spite of all the bad things in your life, God is still Elohim, the God who created all things. So you keep declaring his majesty, you keep declaring how big he is. You speak of his power, you declare how he knows everything, he 
feeds every animal. He speaks once and what he says happens. You speak of his wonders, how he split the Red Sea and he brought down the walls of Jericho. He never changes. Your problems don't change who God is. They don't change his power. That's why you always have words of thanksgiving because you are at a level where you focus on God's majesty through his creation no matter what you're going through at the moment. Next week I will show you how crucial it is not to forget what I am has already done in your life. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.